Okay, so now what I want to talk about is setting up a spreadsheet so that Templator can target different compositions that exist in your project panel. In addition, you can have some control over how Templator names output assets. In this column called target, you're able to specify by name which composition Templator should process per render job. So each render job again is a row. The ID column allows you to specify a unique identifier that gets appended to an output asset such as a digital video file or a replicated composition. Okay, so let's hop back over to AE and take a look at a project file that makes use of these two special columns. Okay, I'm going to open up a project file that's specifically designed and rigged up for that spreadsheet that I just showed you. You'll notice in my project panel I have two compositions. One is set to 720p and the other one is set to 1080p. They're the same thing. The only difference visually is that you can see I've got these labels here in the upper right corner. So for the 720p I've got this here and then for the 1080p I've got this one here. Now that I have the spreadsheet set up for this particular project file, I'm going to go ahead and set up my render options. I'm going to set this to uh, draft settings and for render row two through four I'm just going to change the end row to six and then for the job prefix I'm going to call it target sample and I'm going to go ahead and hit render so templator is going to ask me if it's okay to delete all of the files in my output destination where I specified here so I click yes so for the first render job it's going to do the 720p composition the next render job is going to show you that it's doing 1080p, followed by another 1080p, and then followed by a 720p, and finally the last one in our range is a 1080p composition. Okay, great. So now let's take a look at the finder. You can see that we've got the prefix for the job, and then we've got the target composition that is specified in the target column for rows two through six. So final underscore 720p, 1080p, you can see here that they're named appropriately. Now, you can also see appended to the file name is the identifier in the ID column here. So final underscore 720p dynamic is this one, and then final underscore 720p punctual is going to be this one. So, you know, if we bring it up and we just take a look at it, we can see that it's, you know, no more string issues, punctuation accepted. Here we have, you know, we can see that the data is actually being read properly. I do want to point out that if Templator cannot find a, a unique identifier in a specific render job, what it does is it uses the index value for that particular render job from your spreadsheet. So you can see this is row four. So here, what happened is Templator appended the index value of that row rather than the ID specified in that cell because it, it simply doesn't have one there. So that's what it does by default. It's also worth noting that when you preview with Templator, all of the targets actually get affected uh, with the spreadsheet data. So for example, if I am back here in my project and I'm looking at my 1080p uh, composition and I hit preview for the next row, um, you can see that the 720p also got affected as well. It's not as if I hit preview and then only the 720p composition gets affected. The 1080p composition is also going to be affected. So this is important to realize because previewing is quite different from performing a batch process. And the target column here specifies compositions to be processed at render time or replication time, not during a preview. If Templator cannot find the composition in the project that you specified here in the target column for whatever render job, like let's say you accidentally miss uh, spell this, uh, you know, you're, you say 1081 or 1091p, and it can't find 1091p in your project panel. What Templator does is it uh, references the preferences that you've set up, and it selects the default target composition that you specified here in the 
uh, preferences panel. So this actually is required for you to perform a batch operation.